Let's talk about the Wish tournament this weekend and the best characters to play. If I was playing in the Wish, I would play Death Younger Togiro, and this is the build that I would go with. I have tested this build quite a bit. I've had a lot of team members that want testing into Death Younger, and so I've been um, playing Death Younger to be nice on that front, but also when he was first revealed, I immediately thought he was cracked and I started getting to work on a death build because I think death gets the best spam foundations and the highest quality of an attack lineup. I have made a lot of changes after testing for a long time and this is ultimately the list that I would play. I think that this list is in strong contention for the webcam regional for me. Right now, I'm between Chaos Mirio, Death Younger, uh, and Water Recovery Girl. I, I want to play Recovery Girl, but I think that she's got some bad matchups that are going to be difficult to overcome. Younger and Mirio are easier to play, right? You just kind of turn off your brain and do the thing. You don't turn your brain off completely. They're still skilled to playing the game, obviously, but they're just a little simpler of a play style than other characters. They still require skill. Don't get me wrong. Um, an unskilled pilot is not probably going to do very well and take down an event with younger Togiro, but the skilled players who pick this deck up probably will do quite, quite well. Let's talk about the choices that I made and why. The deck size as a whole is 63 cards and I'm playing 23 attacks. That is a pretty aggressive attack ratio. But remember, younger is helping our progressive difficulty. He says, after your attack resolves, build it face down. So you're getting plus one foundation and you're clearing your card pool, meaning that you can play a much higher attack ratio than normal and not get punished for it. I believe that more decks lose because they didn't draw attacks than that they checked poorly. More decks lose because they drew foundations than that they checked attacks because a lot of times when you build out to a really nice stage of 10 plus foundations, checking a few threes doesn't matter. And Younger is going to clear your card pool one during the turn. He's gonna net you a foundation during the turn. So you're allowed to play a higher attack ratio. I think if you're playing this guy with a normal attack ratio of 30 to 33%, you're doing it wrong. You can very easily get away with playing a 40% attack ratio on this character. Now this isn't quite there but it is aggressive, 23 attacks. I want to see orange. I want to play some orange, right? If I'm going to be a relatively aggressive character, give me attacks. Next up, the next thing that my attack lineup is doing is pressuring my rival's stage. Younger does not add speed on face. He's not doing anything to make sure that your attacks get through. He's clearing your progressive, he's stacking a lot of damage on, on, on his attacks. So. I want to be playing things that are fast. I want a good amount of speed on my attacks to put pressure on my rival. So I'm not interested in any two speed or three speed attacks. I see a lot of death younger lists running like vile seizing and jaw jammer. I think personally, that is a mistake. There's better things to be doing. I don't wanna let my foot off the gas. I want to keep putting pressure on my rival and forcing them to commit down resources if they want to block my attacks. For that reason, you can see I've got Twisting Azure Inferno, which is like four speed, but if I turn it on and I say that my rival's checks are getting minus one, it's like plus one speed to all of my attacks. Piercing Needle, I love in Younger Togiro. I'm gonna to talk a lot more about this card. I think it's the MVP of this deck. If you're not playing Piercing Needle in your death, Younger Togiro, I, I personally think you need to change that. It's four speed, but you can say this attack is plus two speed and minus two damage, making this a six speed attack and then you can stack damage on it with Younger Toguro. So if you're at eight foundations, this is a six mid seven. It has EX three, it has deadlock stun three. It's a one high block, this card is doing it all. Six speed move, four speed move, four speed move, four speed move, four speed move, 80% power, four speed, that's most of the time a six speed move. So I want nothing below four speed. I want to keep that pressure on my rival stage. The other way that I'm pressuring my rival stage is through snack time and frightening calm. Three snack time, three frightening calm. So I can stun my rival's stage out. If I get two of these on board, then all of my attacks are getting stunned too, and they're all relatively quick, just on their face. Because a lot of players right now are not blocking in this meta. There's a lot of players who just are not blocking. They're using their stage 
to have resets and damage reduction. And then they're playing like barrier shield or referee jury run away. They're playing all of these things from their hand to not take that much damage. So they're not interested in blocking because they want to keep their stage up for all this damage reduction. You know, they want like weapon clash, tough as punk in junior high, all of this damage reduction, broken psyche. They want all of this to be up. What giving stun two to all of your attacks does is not let your rival do that. They can't just sit back and not block. They can't sit back and not block and, and uh, just reduce all of the damage on your attacks. Number one, damage reduction, just you have to have a lot of it to have it mean anything against younger. But number two, this says, hey, you're going to have to use your resources soon or I'm going to commit them all down. And now if you're blocking, your resources are just going to get used that much faster because all of my moves are relatively fast. The last way that I'm pressuring my rival stage is through Punisher's Beam and 80% power. 80% power, I get to selectively just point, click, destroy. Destroy that foundation. Oh, Broken Psyche, that's nice. Get it out of here. <laughs> um, Punisher's Beam, if you don't block it, if it deals any damage, then I get to selectively destroy something. Both of these are putting a lot of pressure on your rival. So Punisher's Beam, you can't just simply DR this attack, right? Um, you can't just take this to one damage and feel fine because then I'm going to point and click destroy something. You got to block it. That's what I love about Punisher's Beam. It is demanding a block. Also, in Younger, you don't have to play Punisher's Beam as your lead attack. You can go like Battle Aura Release or Mop Strike as your lead attack because you always want to draw cards on your first attack, right? You want to get that information as fast as possible. Uh, so that you can make decisions and pivot as needed based on the cards you draw. So if you lead with Mob Striker Battle or Release, it gets blocked. You build it down as younger. Then you play Punisher's Beam. Now you're saying, okay, you had one high block. Do you have two high blocks? Because otherwise, I'm point and clicking. I'm destroying something. 80% power does it for free and then just becomes a 6 mid 7. Very, very good. Also, it's a breaker 1. This is a breaker 1. Uh, that's not nothing. So I've got lots of ways to pressure my rival stage. I'm not playing anything slow. I'm playing this stun game plan. Refreshing Slice also comes into that for momentum, right? We need momentum outs for Punisher's Beam. If we're gonna be getting this free momentum, then we can use Refreshing Slice to also stun our rival stage out. Now we have eight spam foundations all putting pressure on our rival stage. We have fast attacks putting pressure on our rival stage, and then we're selectively destroying foundations. We're just, we're just not letting up the pressure and eventually the attacks get through and younger makes it. All you have to have is a few attacks hit. Uh, we are 4Xing all of our good attacks. Battle or release and trace size, they just have to be 4Xed. You can't not 4X these cards. Trace size is crazy. This is crazy. In younger, this is going to be like a 4 low 8 free echo. Uh, that's not fair. Battle Aura Release is going to be a 4 high 8, then you use Younger. It's going to be like a 4 high 12, 4 high 14 that draws you a card. That's not fair. Mob Strike is going to just basically let you filter your hand out. I'm only playing 3 of it. It is very good, but it's not demanding to be 4 x like Battle Aura and Trace Eyes. Uh, it's, it's, it's in the realm of like Punisher's Beam at 80%. I love these cards, but 3x is just fine. 4x on Piercing Needle. I think that this attack is much, much better than Vile Seizing in Younger Toguro. And I think that's just a fact. This is a six speed attack instead of three speed. It is your best momentum out. We have no other momentum outs other than Trace Size if we don't want to destroy a ready foundation. But this is EX3. EX3. You have two momentum. You're going to say this is a 12 speed attack. It also has Deadlock Stun 3, which pairs really, really nicely with Snack Time, Refreshing Slice, and Frightening Calm. If they go, and you have all sorts of ways to push your rival into Deadlock. You can push your rival into Deadlock on face with Younger. You can push your rival into Deadlock with 80% power. You need a way to punish your rival for going into Deadlock, and there's almost nothing better than Stun 3. You say Stun 3 with a Snack Time and a Frightening Calm, you said Stun 5 on this attack. You say Stun 5 all EX3, they're just not blocking that. And it's a one high block. I love everything about what Piercing Needle is doing in this card, all in this deck. Also, Piercing Needle is the best thing you can grab off of Punisher's Beam because it says in the momentum, after your unblocked attack deals damage, your rival loses two health. So it's another two damage. If your rival does not block your Piercing Needle, don't build it down. You do not always have to build everything down as younger to a Giro, your lead off attacks. If your leading attack does damage, 
Keep it in the card pool. Play another four diff on a five. When they block that one, build that down. Don't be building down your unblocked attacks. Build down your blocked attacks, the things that aren't getting you momentum. Okay, after that point, everything about the deck goes to defense. And the defense here is through basically disruption and resets is what we're focusing on. We have some surviving, the, you know, our zero diffs. Of course, we got surviving the final, one of the best zero diffs. Um, this one's just blank, but we're struggling on low blocks here. Speaking of struggling, we got 3x struggling with studies to grab something back into our hand. We have a lot of draw in our foundations with settling old debts and bloody valuation. Bloody valuation is very, very underrated right now. We have a lot of people doing momentum shenanigans with face up foundations. The bottom enhance on bloody valuation is playable while committed, and it is not once per turn. The only thing once per turn about this card is the response that you get to draw. But if you have three or four momentum, which this deck can pretty easily get to with Punisher's Beam, then if you're playing like against Amajiki and he has three face-up momentum, spend your three momentum and flip all of his stuff. You're allowed, you're allowed to do that, and it can be quite good. Uh, weapons Clash, of course, for damage reduction. Also, it helps on Younger that you can flip, build the top card of your deck face down committed. And then that can either help you get more damage on face, or you can just blow it up with Frightening Calm to get your stun one off and not have to destroy a ready to do it. You can destroy a committed. Always cool is awesome in this character. It can allow you to very quickly build a huge stage, or it can just be a, hey, you can't modify the damage of that attack. You know, this can be your reset, basically, uh, or it can just build you to a big stage very quickly. I really like Always Cool going second. It helps you, it helps... Um, equalize you know it helps you equalize pretty quickly with the player that went first a couple learning to harden you can destroy it to draw a card with either weapon clash or frightening calm or you can just commit it for minus two speed we're not playing a lot of speed hate here learning to harden surviving the final is really it pretty much this deck is blocking once maybe blocking twice and then we're just face tanking everything else that's why cards like always cool and weapons clash are so important they allow us to face tank more attacks Facing danger is very, very similar. We're going to take only five damage instead of, let's say they made like a 20 damage move. Hey, we'll destroy it, take it to five. But it's also really nice because if they're playing any sort of stun and they commit this card, then you can like unflip your Keiko Zade, for example. And you can say, thank you very much. I'm going to break her to you again uh, because you did that. I love the facing danger Keiko Zade combo. It also helps on your attacks against, for example, like in the Wish tournament, if you're going up against Elder Toguro, and they, let's say, bury your shield, make your speed zero, and then they flip it and make your damage zero, you can destroy facing danger and take it back to five. You can destroy facing danger, take it back to five, commit learning card and take it back to seven. Hey, Twisting Azure Inferno is back online. Uh, learning the standards, this is another way to pressure our rival stage in the sense that we can flip it and when our rival builds an asset or foundation, we can then flip that. Or we get this bottom response, 80% of the time you're using it for the bottom response. After you take damage from an unblocked attack, remember, we're face tanking a lot of attacks here. Your rival has to play a non-attack card as their next form or end their combat phase. This combined with Keiko's Aid is pretty darn nasty because Keiko's Aid says your rival's next attack gets too difficulty. You combine learning the standards response with Keiko's Aid response. Now their next attack is getting plus three difficulty um, and failing that check does not end the combat phase. That is something big. Keiko's A does not say that you're allowed to fail. You have to be able to pass it. And all Younger needs is that one extra turn. Because we're coming at you every turn with a 38% attack ratio. I don't care about progressive. Coming at you every turn. And you have to be ready for that. So if Keiko's A, learning the standards, facing danger, always cool. If these can just buy me that one extra turn, that's all I need here. Genkai's Guidance feels really good in Toguro because you build your stage so quickly that the Destroy 3 Foundations doesn't feel too bad. This is big into matchups like Byako where they're, or Bowie, you know, where the Bowie especially, they use their form, they give their big thing. They can even say uh, Space Land, but then you say Respond and just uh, get that out of here. This is big against five-handers where an attack means a lot. The sideboard... I've got 100% power here because if my rival's playing a character that you just need to turn off, this is going to be your best way to do it. It's also just a 5 low 10. I mean, just stats alone. This card's kind of crazy. It also has EX3. 
<laughs> to pay off. I mean, this 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 is kind of a crazy card, but it's really only worth it to check whenever committing your rival's character is a big deal. So if I'm going to side this in, I'm going to side it in over Punisher's Beam or 80% power, probably Punisher's Beam. Uh, Quan is best task if they're playing all sorts of actions. You know, if you're playing like Elder Tuguro and they're using those barrier shields or those referee jury decks, go ahead and put in some Quan's task just to delete their action. Uh, unbreakable because I don't have a lot of low blocks. It's also pretty good against like Biako where they're forcing you to flip your stage. And this is saying, hey, I'll discard a momentum. When you play a non-character ability that destroys, flips, or removes a card in your stage, cancel it. Now, you're not going to be able to cancel Biako, of course. That's a character ability. But you can cancel like his attacks and things that are forcing you to flip um, your stage. Or, or destroy or remove. There's a lot of stage protection here. But it's also because this is a list where I'm only playing 11 low blocks. So this can help those mid blocks become those. Three Graceful Maneuvers. I think this is going to be a really important card to have in your sideboard for the Wish Tournament. If you're going against Karama, where he's just clogging your card pool with a million cards, side in your Graceful Maneuvers. Like I said, not playing a lot of speed hate in this deck beyond surviving the final and uh, learning to harden. So if you need more speed hate, if you're playing a Karama who's clogging your card pool, put in your Graceful Maneuvers. I think it's going to be a very, very important sideboard card. One thing people might disagree about is I'm only running two Twisting Azure, but there's so much damage reduction that hurts this card that I'm not quite on it nearly as much as other people. Uh, it's not doing anything else, really. And so two of it is just fine. Like, the best thing it's doing in most decks is not counting towards progressive, but in my, you know, in Younger, he already doesn't, he, he just laughs at progressive already. So the best thing it's doing in this deck is saying plus one speed to everything. Uh, it's not necessarily the not counting towards progressive that matters here. But for Punisher's Beam, we need weapons and ranged cards, right? This is not a weapon or ranged, but it's still just too good to not put in here. So that gives me 20 attacks with weapon or ranged on them. And then you get the uh, four always cool and you get the two refreshing slice. So that's 26 cards, 26 cards in a 63 card deck with weapon or ranged. You're hitting the momentum most of the time. It's consistent enough. You don't need all weapon or ranged attacks. That is it for this deck profile. This is probably what I would play if I was playing in the Wish this weekend. Is it the most fun deck? No. Is it the most efficient deck? Probably. <laughs> I think there's a very good chance that Death Younger Toguro is just simply the best deck in the game. I think there's a very good chance of that. 